Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, where today I am out for a stealth camp adventure. Where I'm at is a secret, but I was just dropped off by the one and only Susie, and I'm excited to see where I end up. My plan initially was to hike to the top of that mountain and camp up there tonight, but that's not going to happen. There are so many people out here. It's incredible. This place is packed. There's people at every overlook, people having picnics and whatnot. It's simply not going to work. So I'm having to change my plans on the fly. What a shame. Up on top of that mountain is such a cool place. It really is, but that's okay. We will adapt. We'll come up with something else. Okay, just checking out an area here. In addition to all the traffic and all the people here today, there's a forest fire. Looks to be about three miles away from here. So we have that to deal with as well. Whoa, this is awesome. So check this out, everyone. That is so cool. You can see the haziness. That's from the fire there. The fire's actually over here on the other side of this ridge. Speaking of the fire, the smell of smoke is quite strong at this time. In fact, you can see the smoke right here. If I can get up high enough, I will show you all the fire, but I'm not sure if I can from here anyways. Now the good thing is, rain is on the way. In fact, a lot of rain is on the way. Hurricane Delta will be here tomorrow night, and that is one reason why I'm out for this quick in and out trip. It's funny folks, the place on top of that mountain that I was going to camp at, it hasn't been open in years, and today, it's been mowed up, it's open, and there were people everywhere. <laughs> that is so funny. That is, without a doubt, how it goes sometimes. As far as the time goes, it's a little bit after four o'clock in the afternoon. I've been out hiking for roughly half an hour, and so far this has been a good call. I haven't seen anyone. Unfortunately, I am right next to a road, having to listen to all that traffic and whatnot, but later on tonight, that should pretty much die down. This is a pretty remote section of North Carolina, which is very close to Virginia. And there's no close towns or cities or anything like that. Folks, it is a beautiful day. The sun's about to go down. The forest is an amazing ray of different colors. Stunning. This really is incredible. My plan is pretty simple for now anyways. I'm going to hike this trail for a bit until I can find a good place to get off of it. If I can find a place where I can have some privacy, I'll stop, have some coffee, and then I will take a look at the map and come up with a game plan. Because right now I don't have one at all. As with many of my stealth camping adventures, I have a plan A. There's always room for a plan B, but very rarely do I actually come up with those plans. So I will have to improvise this one.
I have found a pretty good spot right next to the road. It's surprisingly sheltered, actually. In fact, I could camp here and nobody would ever know it. I'm not going to, but I could. As far as the hiking goes, it's been very pleasant today. I've done maybe three, four miles, something like that. It hasn't been too strenuous. Cheers, everyone, cheers. I tell you what, it feels amazing up here. It's in the high 60s right now. There's this breeze coming in. It feels awesome, it really does. When it comes to camping, I have quite a few options. Right here is the beginning of multiple sets of fields, and it goes on for miles. So I can pretty much set up camp anywhere I want to. The most important thing to do is to stay out of sight from that road. The odds of people hiking through is very minimal, especially now because it's after five o'clock. We have about two hours of light left. So I have a little bit of time here. Now, because this is a stealth camping adventure, no fire. I've gone over the rules before. I will not do that in this episode. If you want the stealth camping rules, watch my previous stealth camping adventures. I've been to this park before and I've had some pretty crazy experiences out here. This is a place in North Carolina that closes during the winter. So the roads will be closed, but you could walk past the fence, you could hike up here and basically do whatever you want to, snowshoe, ski, and so on. Now, my buddies and I, we've come out here, hiked around, and one night after a snowstorm, it, it became really foggy, the temperature raised a little bit. So it's super foggy, we're walking the road, and there are coyotes surrounding us. And basically they stayed in the woods and they followed us for miles as we hiked the road. My friend was scared to death. <laughs> but uh, that was a cool experience for sure. While it is busy right now during the day, this is a remote park. There's not many people out here. In fact, I haven't seen any garbage. The path here is well-worn, but it's not often traveled, you can tell. As soon as I hit the trail, I haven't seen anybody today, and that has been pretty nice. As I was coming out here with Susie, I was concerned. There was a lot of traffic at every pullover spot. Gosh, there was just so many people. On top of that mountain up there, just tons and tons of people. All right, well, I'm going to pack up here, start hiking this field, and see if I can't find a good place to camp at. Now, since I'm out in this field, I'm skirting around the perimeter. That is, of course, one of the rules. What I'm looking for is just a good, protected, flat spot to set up my tent at. In the mountains, that's a lot harder than you would think. Flat spots, that's a luxury. Now I tell you what everyone, this isn't bad. In fact, this is almost flat. It's flat enough for me anyways. This spot right here is pretty flat. I might be scooting down a little bit throughout the night, but it's not gonna be bad. 
nobody could see me. The road noise isn't terrible. I'm somewhat sheltered from the wind. Now something that's not so hot about this spot is that the forest fire is over here somewhere and the winds are coming from that direction towards me. So I could see the smoke through the trees. I could smell it quite heavily. I'm going to take a minute here and consider this as an option. It has pros and cons. I've decided to stay put. This is a good spot. Not only that, but I'm in a good position for tomorrow. Here in a minute, I'll get dinner going, and when it's closer to dark, I'll set up my tent. My water is almost to a boil. It'll be dinner time here in just a minute. The sun's going down. It'll be out of here in about 20 minutes or so. I think it's gonna be a good night, everyone. For dinner tonight, we have Italian-style pepper steak from Mountain House. This is one of their new packaged, single-serving meals. Most of the time, you have the two servings, or two and a half servings, I think it is, actually. And that's just a little bit too much for most people. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet. I think it's funny. In the comments, every once in a while someone would say, Luke, you need to up your cooking game and actually make some real food. And I always find that a little bit strange. We cook every single night at home. Why not make it easy on the trail, right? <laughs> You may not be able to tell it, folks, but the sun is going down. It's right there at the horizon. And because of that, it's time to set up the tent. It's best to set up right before dark so you don't have to use a headlamp or anything like that. Now, just in case you're wondering, this is the Snug Pack Ionosphere, which is an excellent stealth camping tent. Time to eat a home-cooked meal out on the trail. 
out of the bag into the man, just as nature intended it. So, so here we go. That is really, really good. I will be honest, folks, what's not cool are the mosquitoes. There's quite a few out here. Yeah, they're surrounding me. <laughs> you get accustomed to not having any mosquitoes at all. Like where I live, we don't really have mosquitoes, but you drop down even a couple hundred feet in elevation and things change. So obviously there's mosquitoes here. As far as the wind goes, it's pretty much dying down. I mean, there's just a slight breeze, and every once in a while it picks up just a little bit, but it's not bad. I'll tell you what, everyone. I feel lucky to be here. This is a beautiful spot, all by myself, on the edge of the forest, far away from anyone and everyone. With this being a stealth camp adventure, I guess I'll tell you all about a time that I got caught stealth camping. So picture this. From here, we're about 60 miles north of where I live. So from my house, I was about, I don't know, 30 miles south of there. So I was hiking this trail. I decided to do some stealth camping. I get off the trail. I go up on top of this hill right next to this big rocky face, right? I mean, I was so high up there that I figured I would never see anyone. So the sun's starting to go down. I set up my tent. And it's one of those situations where you're caught red-handed. That was me. I have no idea why he decided to come up there. There wasn't a trail or anything like that. Maybe it was the rocks that caught his attention just like it did mine. It's pretty funny. The guy told me that he used to stealth camp all the time when he was younger before he became a park ranger. And he told me that I need to get out of there before he comes back the next day at like 10 a.m. or something like that. Basically, he was saying, you could stay, but get out. Wink, wink. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. I will be honest with you folks, I have no idea what the hell was happening there. <laughs> that vehicle stopped and it looked like it was shining its lights on an animal that was running next to the fence. It was big, whatever it was. It wasn't a deer. Um, they seemed very interested in it. Bear maybe? I'm not really certain, but uh, <laughs> that's how it goes sometimes. Just weird. Anyways folks, I'm pretty much ready for bed. I'll be crawling inside of the tent here in just a minute. All right, everyone. It is a little bit after 9 o'clock. I was laying here, just staring up at the sky, looking at the stars, and I saw and heard something rather strange. At the horizon, the sky lit up like lightning. I couldn't see a lightning bolt or anything like that, but it was almost like there's a thunderhead lightning flash and there's clouds in front of it so it just illuminated the entire sky but I couldn't really see anything followed by that was a sound not thunder not an explosion the only way I can describe it is as a uh, I mean it sounded like a puff of air that sounds really strange but it was like poof I mean that's basically what it sounded like I looked at the radar there's absolutely 
nothing out there. There's no rain, there's no storms, there's nothing out here. It did that one time, one time only. And uh, I'm confused. I have no idea what I just experienced there. I don't know what that was. I mean, it could have been a meteor, I guess, maybe. But the uh, the sound was really strange. I don't know. Comment down below, share your thoughts. Let me know what you think it was. But uh, We'll see what else happens. Bye, everyone. Hey, everybody. Good morning. It's a little bit after 6.20. And uh, I'm contemplating getting up to watch the sunrise. I haven't made the decision to do that yet. I'd say after about 10 o'clock last night, the traffic died down. I mean, it's just been peaceful, really. So it's been a good night. Slept good. I ended up watching Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise. That is one weird movie. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad. <laughs> I don't think it was great, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> it's chilly, but not cold. I'd say it's around, I don't know, 47 degrees maybe, something like that. It's not too bad. I'm going to get dressed, just walk around the corner here. We'll watch the sunrise, and we'll get going with the day. As soon as I turned off the camera, I got a text message from Susie, and she wanted me to call her. So I call her and she has a crazy story to tell. Apparently, about 20 minutes ago, someone was cruising down the road. Our house is right next to the road. And so someone's cruising by and explosion. They drive off the road, plow into our creek, which has like a rock wall. And now there's like cops outside and who the hell knows what's going on. Um, yeah, I don't know. She's going to call me back here in just a minute. So I ended up calling my dad, who lives up on top of the hill. And uh, he is going down there to handle things. All right, so here's Susie. Let's talk to her. Hi, Susie. Hey. Hi. Okay. Yeah, our vehicles look fine, and there's a cop. He's, like, looking over in the field, like... He's in the road, and he was, like, looking that way, but mm. our vehicles look fine. Okay. Then, that, that thing is in the creek, tipped. It's tipped into the creek? Yeah, into our creek. Gosh, okay. I wish I was I there. I know. I wish you were here, too, and I'm sorry. I don't... Oh, it's fine. Say hi to the uh, viewers, because you're on camera. Oh. Hello. <laughs> Good morning, so... But, yeah, it's, like tipped into the creek yeah okay Ugh. okay all right well camera i'm turning you off i'll talk to Susie for a bit bring you all back in a minute all right everyone let's watch the sunrise together sun is up, but it's behind that cloud there. So I talked to Susie some more. It turns out that a truck hit a deer, and she actually heard two things. She heard the truck crash, and then the state trooper shooting the deer. So, it sounds like I have work to do when I get home. Apparently it destroyed a rock wall that we have in the creek, and of course messed up the ground and whatnot, but hopefully the driver is okay. Um, yeah, that's how it goes. I was going to stick around for the sun to come above the clouds, but that cloud is expanding pretty good. It's supposed to be cloudy today with rain coming in sometime this afternoon. And then Hurricane Delta will be here, let's see, tomorrow night, I think. Something like that.
It's interesting, folks. The winds are picking up. It's getting cloudy. It's funny. It cleared up just enough for the sunrise. <laughs> now it's back to being nasty. All right, everyone, cheers. It's coffee time. Breakfast will be ready here in a minute. Life is good. Now, do you all recognize this location from the last video? <laughs> oh yes, we are in the same place. In fact, where I had lunch underneath the tarp is just down the hill here. <laughs> Since I was here last time, I've been dying to come back and I'm so glad I was able to do this trip. I really wanted to sleep on top of that mountain, but that's how it goes. It simply wasn't in the cards. There's just too many people up there. So let's go ahead and crack into our breakfast. It looks awful, smells good. Let's see how it is. Hmm. It's a little strange, but it's not bad. I wanna share with you all an interesting experience that Susan and I had the other day. So we were at a park that's pretty close to our house, about 15 minutes away, something like that. And so we're hiking the trail and we see this faint path that branched off and went on top of this mountain. And there are some big rocky cliffs up there. So we wanted to go check them out. So we hike up to the top, don't see anything. It's pretty cool. So we're walking those rocks. Susie sees something and she thinks it's a tent. And I could tell by the way that it's positioned that it's a hunting blind. So we get down there, no one's there but this thing was fully set up. Next to it was this big camo tarp and there were chairs underneath it and some other stuff. And what that camp was, was a poaching setup. So we contacted the park service and took them up there and they destroyed it. And they've begun an investigation to try to catch whoever has been up there. Poaching bear and deer and whatnot. Poaching is a huge problem here in the mountains. And in truth, it's a huge problem everywhere. Something that you may not realize when it comes to poaching is that with the black bear, their body parts are oftentimes sent overseas to like China and whatnot. And that's because many believe that their body parts can cure all sorts of ailments like the liver, the gallbladder, and so on. So the animals are slaughtered here and their body parts are sent out. And it is a problem. For an example, here in North Carolina, there's a big problem when it comes to bears. Uh, there's people that are after the claws and whatnot. This year alone, over a dozen black bear have been reported being seen missing a paw in just North Carolina alone. Mankind is capable of atrocious things. Anyways, I'm glad I found that camp and I'm glad it was destroyed. All right, everyone, here we go. Let's wrap up this adventure together. As for distance, I don't have too far to hike. Maybe two, three miles, something like that. This has been an awesome adventure. And I know I say that every single time, but it's true. I look forward to getting out to camping more than just about anything. Peace and solitude, my friends. We all need it. Kick back, escape your problems, or maybe even think about your problems. <laughs> I do a little bit of both. Talking about problems and hardships and whatnot, I receive emails quite often and messages from people who say that they've been able to get through a hard event because of the channel, they found some inspiration, or heck, just entertainment to get them through the hard times. The thing is, everybody goes through hardships. Nobody has it easy forever. And in the end, no matter what you're going through or how bad it is, you will get through it. I promise you that. When you go through the bad, it helps teach you to appreciate the good. And one day you'll look back on it, it'll be a distant memory, but it will have made you stronger. No doubt about it.
My biggest piece of advice is this. Whatever your hardships are, you are the one who has to fix them and correct them. You are the one who has to do something about it. If there's something that needs to be fixed or changed, corrected, whatever, get to work. Do it now. Don't wait, don't delay, don't waste any time. The sooner you get to work, the sooner everything will be all right. With this adventure, I think the most surprising aspect for me has been just how quiet it's been. No animals other than whatever that guy in the vehicle was chasing <laughs> last night. That was weird. I have no clue what was going on. It was just too far away. If they stayed longer, I would have gone and investigated, make sure that nothing bad was happening, but they stopped, kind of turned their lights, and eventually left. So, no clue. Outside of that, everyone, I can't think of anything else to talk about, so I'm going to hike. I'm going to finish this up, go meet Susie, and get out of here. Can I get a lift into town? Where are you headed? Look everybody, it's Susie! Oh my gosh, is that for me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Best wife ever. Cheers everyone. How are you, Kitty? Tired. Are you? Mm -hmm. Been dealing with too much bullshit this morning? <laughs> this adventure is done. Susie, tell us about your night. <laughs> So I'm very tired because my morning has consisted of vehicle crashes, gunshots, dead animals, state troopers. Well, I'll tell you what, let's switch places. I'll drive. I slept great, so <laughs> <laughs> let's switch. Everybody, thank you very much for joining me for this trip. Take care, strength and honor. On to the next adventure. Bye. Bye. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands Strong like a tree There's roots where I stand Oh, I've been running from the law Hope they won't shoot me down soon Catch me howling at the moon